Hello friends, as we get started today, I wanna to welcome you to our online service. There's a lot of ways that you could be spending your time and we're glad to have you choose to spend it this way. We hope and pray that wherever you are in your walk with Jesus, that you are encouraged and lifted up today. Before we continue in a time of worship, I wanted to get a few things on your radar. First is our upcoming worship and prayer night at our Rock Rim campus on February 22nd. Mark your calendar now and plan to join us at 6.15 p.m. for a powerful time of declaring God's goodness together. Come expecting that as we sing out our praise, as we lift up the name of Jesus, the Holy Spirit will be present in our hearts, will be drawn closer to our good Father. We hope to see you there. Do you have the Woodman app? If not, you should take out your phone, head to the App Store, type in Woodman Valley Chapel, and download our app. It has a bunch of great content like uplifting stories of life change and transformation to encourage you in your walk with Jesus. Bible reading plans to draw you deeper in God's word and opportunities to share prayer requests and pray for others. You can even find info on next steps designed to help you grow in your faith and resources to support the weekend services and community groups. All right, let's jump into the service. As you do, take a moment to settle your mind and focus your heart on what God would have for you today.
Whether you are joining us here in person at one of our campuses or maybe later on in the week online, thank you for being with us. If we've not met, my name's Josh, and I am one of the pastors here, and I'm excited for this opportunity we have to open up God's Word together. 
How do you respond to good news? I mean, if there's that, that, that job that you've been walking through, you, you've two months of interviews, now you're, it's between you and another candidate, you find out you get it, what do you do? Or, or, or maybe it's, it's that college acceptance for the play you apply to, but you're like, there ain't no way I'm getting in there. What do you do? Or maybe it's, it's the news from the doctor that the thing they thought was something ended up not being anything, and you breathe a sigh of relief. What, what do you do? Chances are, I mean, most of us, I think, we let somebody know. A lot of us probably got that person, we're going to text at the very moment. And given the magnitude of the thing, I mean, you may even celebrate. Maybe that's a dinner out. Maybe that's the, like the nail thing. I don't know what the, the Manny Petty thing. Maybe, maybe it's a, a nice bottle you've been saving for a while. A lot of us celebrate good news. And if that makes sense to you, you should have no trouble relating to the text that is before us this weekend. A man named Levi is about to receive the greatest news he has ever heard. Jesus wants him. Levi cannot believe it. And he's going to throw a party in celebration of that fact. You know, two weeks ago, Pastor Kurt was taking us through the beginning of Luke chapter 5, uh, where Jesus called his first disciples. And who he, cho cho who he chose was somewhat surprising, uh, because Jesus didn't choose from the religious elite. He didn't choose from the upper echelon of society. Jesus first called three common fishermen to himself. That Jesus next calls Levi. Well, it's beyond surprising. And was actually for most offensive. And Levi knew it. Thus, the reason for celebration. And my prayer for us this weekend has been twofold. One, that some of you, perhaps, will understand for the first time what made Levi so happy. And two, I've been praying that Levi's enthusiasm will be a little contagious. This may come as a shock, but I've met some grumpy Christians. <laughs> and when you consider the glorious good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ, I mean, it should be easier to find a unicorn than one of them. So if you had to drag yourself here, if you are hurting, and in pain, if you feel guilty over the things you have done, if you think there's no place for you, this, this is going to be awesome. This is the gospel. If you would, let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this opportunity we have to gather and from the outset, I ask you to forgive me for those times when, through my behavior, I seemingly act as if I don't know that your son got up. Lord, would you refresh us? Would you brighten our spirits within us? And would you help me not to make any mistakes? Be glorified as we open your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, if you'd like to follow along, turn to Luke chapter 5. 
We're going to begin at verse 27. And we're in this series that we've entitled Rest Assured, looking at the gospel of Luke. And Luke wrote his gospel to a man named Theophilus. And, and he wanted to provide Theophilus with an orderly account, uh, not necessarily a chronological account, but an orderly one, so that Theo would have certainty concerning the things he'd been taught. And one of the subjects that Theophilus had been enrolled in was that sometimes being a follower of Jesus is not the most advantageous way to influence, well, to make friends. Uh, sometimes being a follower of Christ actually puts us at odds with the world. And, and, and Luke wants Theo to know that's just part of it. And, and so beginning in verse 17 of chapter 5, uh, Luke begins this sort of mini section where he's going to go and he's going to highlight five things that Jesus did that rubbed some people the wrong way. Last weekend we saw Jesus forgave sins, and so that was a bit of a shocker. Uh, today we see Jesus uh, rubbing people the wrong way because of who Jesus chose to hang out with. And, and good religious people wouldn't have done what Jesus did. It starts with the call. Verse 27 says, After this, he, Jesus, went out and saw a tax collector named Levi sitting at the tax booth. And he said to him, Follow me. Uh, it, it begins with after this, and that's not a particularly precise time stamp, uh, but, but Luke is just wanting to say, after the healing of the paralytic, after that forgiving sins thing, this was subsequent to that at some point. And, and it says that he went out and saw, he, he saw a, a, a tax collector named Levi. Well, in the Gospel of Mark, in a, in a parallel account of this, uh, Mark points out that Jesus had gone out by the sea and, and was teaching some people. And, and so it is safe to assume, uh, or at least we could say it seems to indicate that if, if Levi's sitting at his booth by the sea, he was one of those tax collectors that worked in the fisheries department uh, because they would tax fishermen on what they caught and if you're new to this, you need to know that tax collectors, uh, they, they were among some of the most hated people in, in, in New Testament Israel. Uh, among the Jews, uh, tax collectors were like the worst of the worst. Uh, for one... Uh, because the tax collectors worked for the Romans, the Romans who were occupying Israel, well, tax collectors were considered like traitors. Uh, but more than that, um, they, were, they were considered thieves. Uh, because what the Romans would do is that they would sell an area uh, to a tax collector. And they didn't publish the sale price and, and so it was up to the tax collector how much they could get over and above what they owe the Romans. They got to keep. I mean, it was almost kind of like legalized extortion. It was up to them. And so consequently, um, tax collectors, uh, they were not invited to a lot of neighborhood cookouts. Uh, tax collectors, if that was your chosen profession... By choosing that profession, you were from that point forward prohibited from serving as a witness in a, in a Jewish court. Your word meant nothing. If that was your chosen profession, you were prohibited from worshiping at the synagogue. You, you, you were excommunicated if you became a tax collector. People did not like them. 
But on that day, Luke says that Jesus saw Levi. And, and the thing is, the English word saw really doesn't do it justice. I, I could tell you that I saw a, a couple deer on, on, on the way to church. And in saying that, I, I need mean nothing more than I noticed them. I didn't want to hit them with my car. I, I saw them. Uh, the, the word that, that Luke uses ha has a lot more depth to it. It carries more the idea of like a careful and deliberate vision. Almost as if I were to say, I mean, I, I, on the way to church, I stopped and, and studied those two deer. Why I would do that, I have no idea, but I'm just trying to make the point. It's not that Jesus just like was walking by the sea and just noticed or, or saw like there's the tax collector guy. No, no, Jesus, Jesus saw him. He, 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 he looked at him. And, and Mark says, right, that Jesus was teaching the people. That people were coming to Jesus and Jesus took that opportunity to preach. But as Jesus, as Jesus was doing that, as, as he's preaching, he's looking, he's noticing, and he, he goes on to a parable, and then, and, but then, but then he, he sees him again. And, and then he, he's maybe sharing that good news of the gospel, but sort of in his mind, he he keeps having his attention drawn to Levi. And it doesn't say that Levi's looking at Jesus. It says Levi's sitting at his booth. Levi's at work, and it's Jesus who's teaching, but Jesus who's watching and looking at him. And what Jesus did next was stunning. At some point, after the sermon, people milling about, um, coming up, asking questions. Jesus, Jesus walks over to that tax booth. And I don't know if he got right up in his business and put his hands on the table. I don't know if Jesus stayed six feet away. But he looked at him and he said, follow me. And what the text doesn't say, but I'm almost like 98% sure it happened, is Peter, James, and John were like, wait, what? Remember, Peter, James, and they, they, they're fishermen. It's not a stretch to say Levi's the guy who's been ripping them off. And Peter, James, and John, they've been going around telling people, yeah, he asked me to follow him. I'm following Jesus now. And, 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 and then Jesus says to Levi, and you too. Now, you may not be as hated as a tax collector was in New Testament Israel. You may be hated more. <laughs> you could very well be considered the least likely to follow Jesus. And have consequently, you may have paid little attention to Jesus yourself. I assure you that Jesus has been paying very close attention to you. Jesus sees you. Jesus is interested in you. Jesus takes notice of you. And I tell you, Jesus offers you the very same invitation he gave to Levi that day. He says, follow me. What do you think of that? It is surreal 
to think. But God shows his love for us in that while we were yet still sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus did not come for us when we were doing awesome. He did not come for us once we had sorted everything out. He came for us when we were lost, when we were doing our own thing, sitting at our desk and paying no attention to him. He came and he died for you and for me when we were still sinners. And he offers us a way out. He offers us a freedom from the tyranny of this life. He offers us an escape from the pressures and the burdens of this temporal existence. He offers you and he offers me abundant life and relationship with God. He says, follow me. What do you say to that? This, this was Levi's response. Verse 28. And leaving everything, he rose and followed him. And Levi made him a great feast in his house. And there was a large company of tax collectors and others reclining at table with them. If you step back and look at it, there's actually two parts to Levi's response. He demonstrates a level of commitment that's pretty strong. And he, he demonstrates a healthy measure of recognition for what has been offered him. Now, Levi, Levi was all in on this Jesus thing. It says that leaving everything, he rose and followed him. And I would have loved, I would love to have seen that go down. Had Levi even paid attention at all? Or, or was there like that chance that as he was, you know, working, did, did he listen? Did he see was he taken aback a little bit when he was like, it looks like he's coming over here. No, he's, oh, he's coming here. Dude's, dude's right there. When Jesus looked at him and said, follow me, to, to watch Levi, presumably silently, process that invitation. To, to see Levi nod in acceptance, kind of roll up his ledger, and he'd take off his badge, to, to watch the smile begin to grow across Jesus' face to see Peter, James, and John kind of like, what is going on? To hear the hush whispers of a shocked crowd. It had to have been something to behold. And I'm not taking a Thing away from the fishermen. I'm going to hang out with Peter, James, and John one day. But I do think we need to give mad props to Levi. Because for Peter, James, and John, if, that, if, if, if the Jesus thing didn't work out, they could go back to fishing. For Levi, walking away from that table, there was no return. And make no mistake about it, Levi was leaving a lot of money on the table when he walked away. He left it all. And, it, and this is like maybe just a little cynical and a little like, I don't mean it bitey, but it's funny as a preacher, 
here in like a Western context, like I feel I need to qualify this, right? Because the point will be made. Someone will come up. Well, maybe they won't now because I'm saying it. But like, well, the, like the, the, those decide, they didn't leave everything, right? I mean, they're, they're, they're making a point, but like Peter still had his house. J- J- James and John had the boat still. I mean, Levi, he threw a feast at his home. I mean, they left everything, but we, we mean that sort of like, like it's a sweet idea. They didn't literally like liquidate all their assets and put it in a communal pot, which is true. They didn't do that. And it is probably good to make that distinction lest anyone get the wrong idea. What I find super convicting, though, is we are like the only people on planet Earth that feel the need to make that point. I think for virtually everyone else, the leaving everything is leaving everything. I got a good friend who grew up in a communist country in Poverty because his father refused to sign on with the party and was just a, like, it just served as a bank teller, low level entry bank job for decades because of it. Jesus was very expensive for him. I have an Asian brother. His parents speak of him in the past tense, he's dead to them because he chose to follow Jesus. Like, real cost and very much leaving everything. In a lot of ways, following after Jesus and retaining all that we have, it's like a Western idea. Levi, Levi gets it. And I know that I don't have to give up everything. I don't want to give up everything. But I don't know about you. I sure hope I would if I had to. I sure hope that if Jesus said it, that I'd walk away from anything for him. That, that's a level of commitment we're called. Called to live out. And we should all display the same healthy measure of recognition that Levi did. It says, verse 29, and Levi made him a great feast in his house. And and, and there was a large company of tax collectors and others reclining at table with them. When I was in high school, I remember going home on on a summer's day, and, and it was a hot day. And even in Canada, I mean, it wasn't like Canada hot. It would be hot anywhere. It was a hot day. And at that point, our house, we had this pool in the backyard. And I remember going in, kind of calling, no one's home. And I look out and I see steam coming off of the pool. And so I open the little sliding thing. And I go out and I step onto that first step. And the water is hot. And there's a little thermometer guy on the, like the ladder in the deep. I look at it and the whole pool is 98 degrees. Now, I don't know about you if you had pools growing up. I will just say my father, very generous on a lot of things but on pool temperature, very stingy. Like some friends that are like, I'm not gonna go swim at your house, it's gonna be, the water's too cold. And so the pool, the entire thing's 98. I'm like, clearly this is a mistake or a problem or a gift of God. <laughs> so I go and I try to call my mom at work to tell her a problem, can't get a hold, I, I call my dad, can't get a hold of anyone. And I'm like, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. 
and I invited every single person I knew. I made up like a a t-shirt, a hat, the old 98, and had a huge party. And my parents come home, and they're like, what is going on? I'm like, it's the best, worst news ever. The entire pool, 98 degrees. Everyone loves it. And they weren't as happy because there were so many people there. <laughs> Levi does the same thing, but not over a pool, over salvation. He no sooner comes to faith in Jesus, he throws not like a run-of-the-mill cookout, like a feast with food and libations. And Levi invites all of his friends, which was limited to a pretty small circle of people that others hated. And it's pretty convicting. I, I've shared before about how I went to college, and I remember unpacking that first day, and I got to my Bible in my bag, and I was like embarrassed to bring my Bible out. I remember thinking, this is it. Like, once I do this, they're going to know, and humming and hawing to myself and making small talk, all the while looking at that duffel in that Bible there. I needed a Levi, you know, to come in and be like, what are we talking about here? What? He's a Christian. Jesus, is, Jesus died for him. Do you want him? I mean, Levi would not even relate at all. He celebrates and he brings all of his sinful friends together, plus Jesus, to tell them of what God has done. Far from being embarrassed about it, Levi celebrated his salvation. Are you celebrating yours? I don't mean this sassy at all because I'm pointing the finger more at me than at anyone else. But I sometimes wonder if I don't see more radical things happen in my life because I'm not doing more radical things in my faith. I, I, I'm not throwing the parties. I'm not like I'm not doing this stuff because I'm 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 like keeping it under wraps. And then I see this guy, and I'm like, what? What would it look like for you to celebrate? Do you need to be baptized? I mean, it's such a funny thing sometimes, right? Like people who have been baptized, I'm talking to them. When would you come to faith? 27 years ago. Why haven't you been baptized? Well, I don't like talking in front of people. Jesus died for you and he got up. He loves you. You're going to spend eternity with him. Get over it. Get in. Tell people, right? I mean, do you need to get baptized? What, is, what, are, you, like, what are we talking about here? You say, well, I just came to faith yesterday. Get baptized. Tell the world. Do you, do you need to, do you need, do you need to share the gospel? Do you need to like let people at work know what you're doing on the weekends? Do you, like not to be creepy about it, not to be guilty, but just to share. I can, no, Tuesday night's not good for me. I have community group. What's that? Okay, it's gonna sound weird, but it's actually awesome. Do you need to throw a party? Like legit, like have a party. Invite some non-believing friends over. Throw the, throw the meat around, throw the like salad if that's your thing. Like, like put on a party, have people like, so what are we celebrating? You know what's amazing and you guys don't even get it. Like I am so thankful for what God has done in my life. I just wanna get some people I like around. Levi understood what Jesus had done for him and he couldn't believe it. And I, I was dead in my sins and now I've been set free, given abundant new life. What is my problem sometimes? Can you relate? I mean, have the pressures of life, ha has just the monotony of world news 
led you to forget you are his and he is yours and you are living your worst days because Jesus Christ will one day take you into his presence forever and not only that we're not on a layaway plan he's in you now He's walking with you now. He's strengthening you now. You can do tomorrow. Because of what he did back then. Are you just grumpy? He got up. And out of all the people in the world, he chose you. That is worth celebrating. That is the gospel. Verse 30 says, And the Pharisees and their scribes grumbled at his disciples, saying, Why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? See, the religious elite were not invited, and there's no reason to think they were standing outside watching, necessarily. Somebody could have told them. Capernaum's not huge. Word would spread fast. Maybe they heard the music. They don't have enough moxie at this point to front Jesus directly. So they go to the disciples. Why do you guys, why does he, why are you eating and drinking with tax collectors and sinners? It's like kind of part and parcel of the same group. And I love <laughs> talking to the disciples. And it doesn't say Jesus pops up from somewhere. Like Jesus, he's like, Jesus actually answers before the disciples have an opportunity And Jesus says, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. It's a brilliant little proverb. And and, and I mean, it is the heart of of, of the gospel, right? The same way, and, and do you ever just call your doctor to hang out? You ever like just sitting down and you're paying the copay? What's up? I just wanted to be here. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> no. When do you call the doctor? When you're sick. You don't even call the doctor when you get better, which is sort of a pet peeve as a pastor, right? You, you, like, oh, let's pray together. And like, I wonder what happened. They never let you know. <laughs> let's just make a deal. If you come up for prayer, the unwritten thing will be you'll let us know when God answers. But I digress. Jesus is like... He's saying this in front of them. And Jesus knows it's not computing. See, because they thought they were righteous. They knew all the rules they were keeping. They they understood all that they were doing for God and how grateful God must have been to have them. And consequently, the Pharisees and their scribes, they are just not all that enamored with Jesus' message. They didn't need it. But for people like Levi, who recognize their sin, and understood that they could be forgiven their sin. And after being kept away for so long to be invited in to relationship, that they could get into. And they had no problem with Jesus calling them to a different way of life. The message of the gospel is that we were going the wrong way. We were dead in our sin. We were separated from God. And there was nothing, nothing you and I could do about it. But God, when we were yet still sinners, he demonstrated his love in that Jesus died for us when we were like that. And Luke 
Mark doesn't do this, but, but Luke's the one that adds in the, this follow me and, and repentance bit, this turning, because the gospel is not just recognizing I'm going the wrong way, but it's to say I don't want to go that way anymore. I'm, I'm going to turn from my sin. I'm, I'm going to follow after Jesus. Follow me, Jesus says. And it doesn't have to happen all at once. I mean, the evil one would have you consider what you're going to lose. Jesus wants you to think of what you're going to gain. And there was, there was no fine print in follow me. You know what I mean? It wasn't like follow me, but you realize you can't be a tax collector anymore. Follow me, but we're going to have to see some things change. Jesus said, follow me. We'll sort it out. What's beautiful is that Levi, if you ever wonder, it's usually because they have Greek and, 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 and Hebrew names, but so many, it seems like New Testament guys are rocking the double name. You know what I mean? You got, you got, you got Simon, who then gets named Peter. There's Saul, who's also rocking Paul, like little Jason Bourne with all these different identities. <laughs> Levi, Levi's better known as Matthew. Matthew, who wrote the first gospel. And do you know who Matthew's primary audience for his gospel was? The Jewish people who had ostracized him who had never let him participate and would never allow him to forget the mistakes that he made. But Jesus changed Matthew. And Matthew recognized that Jesus was the Lord. And Matthew's heart went out to his people. And he wrote about it. Do you want to find what Levi found. You need to confess Christ as Lord, which means you believe that he is the son of God and you must believe that he died and that God raised him from the grave and that he did it on your behalf. And you need to acknowledge your sin Ask him to forgive you what you have done and turn from it and follow him. He will give you new life. And if you were to ask him to do that for you this day, well, from the outside looking in, you will look very much the same. You will go from being dead in your sin to spiritually alive in Christ. And that, that would be something to celebrate. It's as simple as that. If you know that you know you're sick, Ask him to heal you. He will. Do you need to do that? Right now. I want to pray and give you a chance to do just that. Heavenly Father, I thank you that you saw me and that you called me to yourself. And God, forgive me for all the times I thought there was maybe something better around another corner. God, for all of us who are here listening to me right now that have professed you as Lord, would we live with a joy that is unmatched by this world? God, would you remind us and turn our eyes to you
and lighten our steps as we follow daily after Jesus. And God, I ask that in this moment, there would be some, I pray for many, who in the quiet of their own heart would confess they are sick, get up and follow you. Give them courage toward that end give them new life, and we celebrate together. In Jesus' name, amen. You met me at my lowest moment. You saw me at my very worst. When I expected disappointment, Love was all I heard. My sin was deep, your grace was deeper.
Thanks for joining us today. If we can support you in any way, pray for you, please contact us. We'd love to be in touch. But as you go into your week, receive the benediction from the book of Jude. And now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy. To the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time and now and forever. Amen.